Welcome to Paint and Party. Today we're going to do something completely different, a little more loose and um, a little more fun, I think, than perhaps the more rigid structure of painting from just basic shapes. Now we're going to get into more of a natural scene and uh, where you can get a little more playful with things. And we have our illustrious group of Helga and Frenchie and Vicky. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming again. They had such a wonderful time. They had to come back and join us and we're so pleased to have them. And I, know, I expect so much more from them. And th after this workshop <laughs> than we had before, although they showed great improvement. So are you ready? Let's get started. Once again, just follow what I do. Don't ask questions about what we're doing because that's not really going to be revealed until the very end. Though you might have some ideas as we go along. We're using acrylics. Here's my palette. I've got white, yellow, red. I generally go from white to the warm colors and then I circle around to the, to the cooler colors. And then of course burnt sienna and raw uh, and burnt umber. Those are very good colors to have. And if you need black, which I do not use, then you want to mix the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber. So, and I'm going to be giving you your, your color combinations and, but you can also use your own color combinations as you like. This is where it becomes more your piece. It's a very personal thing. Art is very personal. There is no competition in art because each piece as, is as unique as the artist itself. Now, mix a very dark green. We're going to take the hooker's green and go ahead uh, put a little bit of this. There's a kind of a crimson red color we have here. There's a cadmium red and a crimson red. Pull some of that crimson red into your hooker's green because that's going to make a dark green. Be careful because it can kind of move to the properties of gray. At which point, if you follow me in the painting, you know that I really like purple because purple makes a great uh, darkener, shadow color. I'm going to pull a little bit of purple in here just to make it an even darker, very foresty green. And I'm going to pull a little bit of yellow in here. Different uh, pigment uh, manufacturers make the different colors in different ways. So you're going to have to really practice with your color mixing because the same hooker's green and the same crimson red is not going to make the same color combination of one manufacturer than another ma another manufacturer. So I had to pull a little bit of yellow in here to, to get my green tone back because it was sort of going towards gray. You see what I mean? And this is a really great lesson to know too because color theory is very important and the more you study it, the more that you kind of adapt your own colors. Okay, so we got a nice, oh, that's very good, Vicki. Very good, we've got a nice, good dark green. Okay. I hope so. <laughs> I think so. All right, we're going to just start, indicate a little line about the lower part of your canvas, about like so. Just kind of very lightly sketch it. This is going to be an outdoor scene. So you can be very scratchy with the way you apply your paint. It doesn't really matter. You can dab it on, you can streak it, you can stroke it, whatever. Okay, now what we're going to do is just do little blobs with this darker green color. Let's just do little blobs, little blobs of color. And we're going to do them all kind of hanging down from that line that we just drew. And they want to, you want them to be different in size and shape. You don't want them to get too big. And there's a little one here. Now, you want to rinse your brush out really well. And go to your cerulean blue. Cerulean blue is a wonderful sky color, especially when you add white to it. It just has a, uh, it's got a little, it's a warm blue. And um, it's the color of sky on a fall day because it really sings out against the orange, the oranges and the leaves. Okay, so I'm going to take this cerulean blue and the white mixture that I have, like so, and I'm going to kind of plop it in sort of down, know if you can see that, down towards the very, very bottom of the canvas. Just sort of in different places. I'm not really worried about it. Just stick it down there. Let your intuition be your guide to a degree. You really <laughs> <laughs> I want you to kind of keep in pace with me, but like if you're painting by yourself, just it's a lot of fun to paint a picture and just use different colors and just practice what the colors are doing. Okay, you got your blue down. Now I've got a color that's mostly white. 
It's got that same blue tint in it, but it's mostly white. Now, I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to paint it in between what I just put on there. Keep dip dipping back into your, your paint. If you pick up some of the green, which is what I just did, don't worry. This is, this is why this is really fun. This is one of those paintings where your brush strokes really uh, can sing, and uh, your brush strokes are your, your indication of what style you have. If your brush strokes, some are broad, some are very thick, some are very thin and very short. So your brush strokes are really the, uh, the calling card that you leave as an artist. And we're all artists, we all are. Now we're just gonna keep moving on. Oh, this is just gonna be, this is gonna move really quickly too, which I think y'all are really gonna like. Not that quickly. <laughs> Not that quickly. <laughs> well, have, have we all got our little little green blobs and our We've little blue little green blobs. and a little bit of white? Okay. Yep. <laughs> all right. If it's reflection in the water, that's perfect. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? At this point, whatever you want to think it is, is fine. Okay, what I want you to do now is mix a, a light green. We've got a light green going. Um, I actually kind of pulled from this dark green mixture that we had, and I pulled some of this lime green color, and I'm just mixing it all around. Once again, with acrylics, and I will say this every time I paint with acrylics, you want to have the consistency of a heavy cream so that it will smooth, it'll glide evenly on, on canvas or paper, because with acrylics you can paint on canvas or paper. Now what we're going to do, and it doesn't matter how you do this, is gonna just going to take this color here, and I'm just going to kind of fill in this area here. And here. This is not a specific uh, science at all, which is what's really lovely about art. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more um, water on my brush and step back and take a look. Oh, this is the fun part. You see this? I'm not even looking at my canvas. Just kind of put that, just, just scumble it. Actually scumbling, it is a technique, that's what it's called. Scumble, 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 scumble. Using those same colors. Okay. So basically, this area, I want your scumbling to be sort of in this area. Then go back to your color. Um, make it a little darker. Just a little bit. I'm pulling in from that dark green we mixed for, for the little shapes down here. But I, I'm just kind of making it a little bit darker than what it was. Oh yeah. We'll put it down here. Scumble, scumble. And down here or up here. Now I'm going to make sure I get paint where this little bar is. Okay. Scumble, scumble, scumble. That's kind of the key here. Now, isn't this fun? Aren't you having more yes. fun? And they're like, oh, we got to do a, mm -hmm, got to have a straight line. Okay. To me, it's natural. I stumble all the time. <laughs> it's natural to, to natural stumble to with your, while you're scumbling. Stumble, scumble. Scumbling. Okay. Now, I've got another color. I'm kind of pulling from the same greens. And I put a little bit of yellow in here. Of yellow in here. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to. Scumble some of that in. Oh, somebody dropped a brush. Do you know that that is a sign of a good artist? Uh -huh. If you drop your brush, that means you hold your brush very, very lightly because you're like, just, it's some, just a, it's, a, it's an intuitive. My, somebody would see me in my studio, they'd say I'm a master. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can throw it. <laughs> Let's see where it'll land if I just pitch it somewhere. Okay. Now, I'm going to take some of the blue I used for the sky and I'm going to pull it into that same mixture. So one of the things that you can notice here is that I'm taking mixtures that I've already mixed and I'm kind of integrating them into new mixtures and that's what creates continuity in a picture as, so that's not such an abrupt change from one color to another. So let me come in here. Ooh, look at that. We got a little bit of a bluer tone. All right. 
Now, um, how are you liking this, Vicki? I like pattern. <laughs> I'm glad. This Helga, how are you doing? I'm, I'm having a ball. Okay, that's really good. Okay, I'm going to come in now with some ultramarine blue, which is a different kind of blue. It's a cooler blue. It's, um, it's the color of the sky, I think, on, a, on a, just one of those days where you look up and it's just absolutely flawless with, with wonderful clouds. Um, I'm going to put this, pull some of the ultramarine blue in here, and just kind of mix it just a little bit of the cerulean blue. Um, if you mix two of two colors that are the same hue together, a, a warm and a cool, you get an octanic color. So, I've, see it's a little bit bluer here, so we're just gonna kinda, oh, model that in there somewhere. Ooh, that's a big blue. <laughs> <laughs> you got a big blue going? I got a big blue. Oh, that's good. That's good. So y'all got some big colors going, uh, you know, and some other things that you've done. Now, I'm going to go back into this area here, and I'm going to put a little more green, like a little bit more of a true green in here. And the acrylic is really nice and wet now, and so it's going to take, it's going to take on very easily a lot of the other colors. I'm just kind of dotting it around, just sort of follow my lead, basically. With your wider brush, which is what I'm using right now. I want you to rinse your brush off really well. After you get most of your, like, scumbling, you get everything all covered, and you got all these layers. Then I want you to take your brush and just kind of pull some of this color down. Pull it down. We want a little bit of continuity in, in, the, in the direction of the stroke right now. We're just going to kind of pull it down, pull the color down into the the color below it and you want to do that through the whole thing so you've got all these different colors all over your piece but directionally your strokes are going the same way now I'm gonna go back down to this dark green before I get too far away from the greens I'm gonna have to mix some more because I've already used some so I'm gonna put a little bit of that red in there and a little bit of the uh, you know, I thought I had purple on here, but I didn't. I guess I've been pulling from the blue. Okay. Put a little bit of yellow in there to kind of bring the green tone back. And I'm going to go back into this, into these shapes, and I'm going to make them a little darker down at the bottom. And then I'm going to kind of scumble a little bit around the outside of these shapes so that some of my brush strokes show. So now we're going to just put some shapes on here. Um, so you're going to have to trust me. So we're going to make a shape on here about right here. And the shape is going to be um, just kind of not really a, a, a rectangle, but just what I want you to do is just sort of do what you see me do. I am using a mixture of the green and I pulled in some blue because I already had all that dark green going and then I pulled in the blue so that it could get really dark, not black, but, but just a really, really dark, it's actually like a dark navy blue. So I've got this kind of black shape. It's very nondescript. You don't know what it is. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. Now, with your brush, wipe some of the color off your brush. And then just kind of very, very lightly, you can make little, some little squiggles down here below it, like so. Not very um, detailed. Or easy to see at all. Now there's another shape. I'm going to pull some more of the color on my on my round, and I'm going to come just below that little rectangle shape I did, and I'm going to make a, something like this shape, like a comma. Then I'm going to come back in. If you can see my shapes, then I'm going to make another kind of like an oval with a line 
right there. Over here, I'm going to do make this shape. Okay. Now, I'm going to rinse my brush off because I'm going to go and I'm going to create kind of a teal color. I've got some blue. I've got some green. We'll pull some more yellow in and we'll pull some. When you add white to mixtures, it really makes the colors come out. Now, because that looks a little more dead, I'm going to pull some cerulean blue in here. Now I'm getting my teal color. Sometimes you have to go to a pure color to pull the, the vibrancy out. All right. Now I'm going to come over to beside this little rectangle shape. Okay, I want more, I want it to be more blue. So I'm going to pull some from the teal color I mixed, get a little more blue and some more white. And I'm going to make kind of a um, concave circle shape. right beside, let's see, it's a little higher, but that's okay. Now I'm going to take this same brush with the same color on it and sort of scumble around and connect the um, kind of color to the darker color that I've got there. And I'm going to take that same color and I'm going to run it over that little thing that juts out there, that shape. That's how we're describing the things in this piece, is shapes and textures and colors. That's how we're going to work our way through. Because if you're an artist, you deal with visuals. You don't have to use words. The words come from you, the viewer. As you're looking at the piece, then you can find the words to describe what it means to you. How are we doing? Is this good? Okay. All right, now, gosh, it does make a difference with glasses. <laughs> it's just so incredible. Now we're going to take this same teal color, and I'm going to make it a little darker. I'm going to add some more of the ultramarine blue to it. Just give it a little more edge. Actually, I want it to be even darker than that. So we've got something going like this. And I'm going to come in to this, to this uh, kind of concave edged thing shape. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of paint over like one side of those little shapes right here. And then I'm going to come in down here. And I'm just going to kind of model some of the darks throughout this kind of very blurred shape. Because blurred is good. Okay, now I'm going to get a yellow. I've taken a cadmium yellow and my white. And I'm mixing it up once again, get some water to get our. <laughs> did you not get any yellow? Do you need I some? It off. You did? Wow, that must be some green you got going there. I can't wait to see it. Okay, so we're going to take this yellow, and the shape we're going to do with that is kind of like a half moon right underneath that oval shape we made. So you just kind of make a little, a little like a crescent shape, and then you come right below it, and you just do a little dip mark. And I'm going to take, let's see, I'm going to take that same yellow color, pull in some cadmium red. Is that called a dip mark? <laughs> a little dip mark, <laughs> a little, okay. little bit dip mark. And I'm going to pull some cadmium red into that yellow mixture, and it's got kind of a fleshy color. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make a little mark like so in between that dark mark we made next door there. And then I'm going to go back into the yellow and make a lighter color of that same fleshy tone. And I'm going to go back up here 
and I'm going to do another crescent around that dark mark I made. I'm going to go back into the fleshy color that we that we blended. Now just kind of make a triangle top, uh, shape um, underneath the, the yellow crescent that you did. Rinse your brush off and just kind of, what I want you to do is just really kind of blur the edges around here. Just blur them. So what I've done now is I've created an even lighter green color and I'm going to come back down here and I'm just going to just touch my brush very lightly to the canvas and sort of pull it along the edge right here. We also want to do that um, pull a little bit of the cadmium red, just a tiny bit, into that same mixture. Uh, and we want something with just a little more of the red color. We're just going to kind of put that in there. Pull that up next to this darker color too. And do the other side. And I'm going to kind of work it in a little bit down here too. Same thing, those short little strokes, you just pull them down. I'm going to put a little bit more cadmium red. As you notice, we're getting redder and redder and redder. And I'm going to pull a little bit of this cadmium red right here. I'm just going to make a little line, kind of button up against that green. Now I'm taking my white. I'm going to put just a little bit of that pink in there. But it's basically going to be light. And I'm putting it, I'm painting a broader shape rectangle shape underneath the red there. Then I'm going to go back into my dark blue color and I'm just going to pick some dots. Teeny tiny little dots in through that through that white broad rectangle I just did. Okay. I'm feeling pretty good about things. How about y'all? Okay. We're going <laughs> to I, I take that as a great. I take that as a great. Fantastic. Okay, I'm getting some burnt sienna here, and I'm making. I'm mixing a little bit with some white that happened to be on my brush, and I'm going to come right up underneath. Uh, I want to get a little bit more burnt sienna. I'm coming right up underneath the dark line I made that's right above this yellow thing, and I'm making another little burnt sienna mark. And I'm going to come in and make another little burnt sienna mark on that other yellow line I made to the, to the right of that. Any questions? Does anybody have any questions about anything? Can I help you? Are you doing all yes. right? <laughs> okay. I think I'm trying to paint this off watercolor. I think I'm using too much water. It takes everything we've got to keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing about it, when it's all over with, you can relax. <laughs> Then you can rest and, and admire your work. You know, that's the whole thing. I'm going to take some more red and add it to this fleshy color. Still want it to be a nice soft red, so I'm going to pull some more of this, um, the, the flesh color in there. Um, don't want it to be quite that red yet, so I'm going to keep toning it down. You don't have to have the right color when you go to paint. You don't have to have the right color every time. You have to test it out. You have to compare. Because one color, the same color blue, is not going to look the same blue beside yellow as it is beside a streak of green. That's color theory, and that's something that you need to be very aware of when you mix your colors. And the only way you can do that is just to paint. Just paint. Nobody is going to hurt you for it. Okay, so we're going to go back up in here. Yes, this is what I'm looking for. Now I'm just going to kind of do some dots with my brush. Now I'm going to put start to put some bigger shapes that seem to have a bit of a round flavor to them. This is this is really a very sensory exercise because it is about just the tip of your brush um, loading your brush with paint and then you exercising control over how much pressure you put on your brush, which is directly related to how much paint actually ends up on the piece. I'm using a little bit of blue, 
back to the blue. This is where you go back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth with your colors. So let me take a look at everybody and see what we got going here. Oh, okay, that's wonderful. That's, that's wonderful. I like your colors. You were using a little like watercolor, but that's loose, really good too. It got, it got too loose, and but, I was having a hard time controlling. And that's what you got. That's what you. That's very good to know too, because you need to know the expanse of whatever the medium is you're working on. With lots of water or, or medium, and very little medium, and what'll do in between. And you use the retarder on yours too. Then. I did. So when so. you've got the retarder and a lot of water, <laughs> then you then you have really retarded paint. <laughs> It's so retarded it wants to. I no, that's great. Water on that thing just kind of flows. That's wonderful. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I love it. I love it. You're you're just naturally you naturally gravitate to very bright colors, and that's how you use them. I think that's wonderful. I love that. Okay, very good, very good. Oh, this is so exciting, but this is nothing. Oh! Oh my goodness! I've not seen anything like this in a while. But you know. It has a wonderful quality to it. There are. <laughs> You, you've never, I mean, like, this is the third painting you've done in your life. Okay. Has a third touch painting of Van Gogh. <laughs> she's done in her life. Has a touch of Van Gogh. There you go. It's wonderful. Yeah, it was story go. nice. You You're said. exactly yeah. right. Because the, the pointillism. Okay. So, all right. Th we're going to stop right here. But this is what I want you to do. I want you to turn your piece right side up and look at what you have. Does it make sense to you now? Well, it does. It's a poppy field at Argentui. Oh. <laughs> Bonbonnet. I you have, you have just you had there. You, <laughs> <laughs> you have just painted a masterpiece. And you I see how easy far. it was? <laughs> well, let me see them right side <laughs> up. I would like to see them right. But do they make more sense when you put yes. them right side up? They do. You yeah. see, because you were not thinking about what you were painting. You were thinking about the shapes the and the shape. colors. Mm -hmm. But what happened mm -hmm. was, and we spent very little time on this, but what you did was you have what it, what is a very close resemblance to a masterpiece, a, a Monet. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, show them to me right side up. I have, just turn them around for me, please. I would really love to see them. Vicki, I'm telling you, <laughs> she is cloaked in a beautiful blue, uh, blue blanket that's hiding her, her hat. I um, mean, her hat is, is showing through, and it's, oh, it's just wonderful. And just see, um, you see, oh my gosh, see what you've done? Now, what the whole, the whole idea of what we did this time was the right brain, left brain. You, you're, you're not working in your left brain, so it's not clouding your decisions about what it is you're doing or why it is you're doing it. You're having a great time. You're putting color on the piece. You turn it around, and then you just, you, then your left brain goes, oh, oh my gosh, how about that? So this is, this is as right brain as you can get with art. And I, I thank you so much for joining us today. And I think painting upside down is a thing you should always do, but make sure it's your canvas and not you. And uh, we will close out today once again with our uh, libation and cheers for a wonderful, wonderful painting uh, experience. And thank you so much for joining us. Cheers. <laughs> Sunset River Marketplace in coastal Calabash invites you to feed your eclectic soul in a warm, friendly environment where you'll find something for everyone. Art glass, painting, pottery, classes, home decor, demonstrations. It's a sensory experience. 